In the forests and plains of Canada, the mating season for many species is in full swing. From the armoured herbivores like Centrosaurus and Styracosaurus, to the large hadrosaurs like Edmontosaurus and Corypheosaurus. However, one of the most noteworthy displays comes not from these giants, but one of the smallest species. Deep in the forest is a herd of Stegoceras. These small pachycephalosaurid dinosaurs are common at this time and spend most of the year hiding from predators. During the mating season, however, Males risk it all to put on the greatest display possible to attract a mate. Each male picks out an area of his own to defend, and then begins to call out and thrash his head up and down, displaying his domed head to nearby females, hoping to attract as many as possible. This also serves to frighten off other males that wish to take their turf. However, sometimes a good head thrashing isn't enough, and two males will have to come to blows. On top of a fallen tree, one old male is being challenged by a younger rival. They bark at each other, and it soon becomes clear that neither is backing down. Balancing on top of the dead wood, the two males move in front of each other, and begin. Despite the thick domes on their heads, they do not slam their skulls together like modern bison or sheep. Instead, they line the tops of their heads together, and then push against each other, trying to drive their rival back. There is little in the way of technique. It is purely a test of raw strength. Both seem evenly matched, pressing their skulls against one another. Neither gives an inch of ground. As the battle wears on, more and more females take interest in the fight. Every time one of them pushes slightly forward, the other pushes back even harder, their muscles straining, and their skulls grinding. For the two males, it feels like hours pass. But finally, the old male begins to tire, and in that moment of weakness, the younger male pushes one leg forward, forcing his rival backwards. The old male tries to fight back, but the younger challenger keeps the pressure on, and takes step after step, and with one final push, flings the old male backwards. The veteran slips off the tree trunk and falls a few feet to the ground. Though uninjured, he is exhausted and clearly beaten. The younger male instantly begins to display, thrashing his head up and down. The old male is forced to give up his territory and leaves the area to the victor. As the triumphant male asserts his dominance, the loser moves to the outskirts of the breeding site. He doesn't even have time to catch his breath when suddenly he is hit from the side and pinned to the ground. With no strength left, he is helpless, as sharp teeth cut into his neck, leading to a quick but violent end. The attacker is the Sauronophalestes, a small lightweight carnivore, one of many species that live in this large forest. Normally he would go for young Stegoceros, but his kind has learned that during the mating season, Defeated and weakened males are vulnerable to attack, giving the small predators a much easier hunt. Wherever the Stegoceras are displaying, there are always multiple Sauronophalestes nearby, waiting impatiently for one of the herbivores to get separated. The Stegoceras mating rituals ensure that only the strongest reproduce, but also ensure that some of their predators get an easy meal. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down our first pachycephalosaur, Stegoceros. Stegoceros was originally discovered in 1898 in Alberta, Canada, and since then over 40 specimens have been found. It was a small to medium sized pachycephalosaur, reaching lengths of between 2 and 2.5 meters, stood between 0.5 and 0.7 meters tall, and weighed between 10 and 40 kilograms. It lived between 77 and 74 million years ago in what is now southern Canada and the northern United States. Now when it comes to pachycephalosaurs, many people want to know, did they butt their heads together? Well, the answer is different for each species, and it usually comes down to maybe, most likely not. But let's look into the subject a little more with Stegoceros, 
as it's one of the species most commonly researched when it comes to this. Over many years and loads of research, including a lot of scans, it was found that the large dome-like head shape grew out as the animal aged, and the larger ones belonged to the males, while females had flatter heads. Now this could simply be a display feature for them to impress a mate. However, a 2013 study showed that 22% of the male skulls had lesions consistent with head budding, and other studies show that the inside of Stegocerus skulls were double bone layers, making them better suited to take impacts than modern head budding animals like bighorn sheep. So for now, in Stegocerus's case, it seems that the males would hit their heads at least on occasion for intraspecific combat. They may not only have head butted but also flank butted and use their heads as visual displays as well. It should also be obvious that the example I gave in the narrative part of the video is my own take on their behaviour. The tail of Stegosaurus was very stiff and it has led to the theory that Stegosaurus used it as a form of tripod with its legs so that it could resist tension and torsion during their fights. The teeth were small and rigid and since they couldn't chew, they likely sheared off plants, seeds, and insects in swift bites. They weren't picky either, being indiscriminate bulk feeders that would try and eat just about any plant. Stegocerus also had an incredible sense of smell, as it had large olfactory bulbs in its brain. It also had turbinates in its nasal passages that would cool the air as it breathed, and in doing so, also kept the blood going to its brain cool, even when the animal was overheating or running from a predator. It also had excellent eyesight, and above its eyes had hardened ridges. As I said earlier, Stegocerius has been one of the main species studied for head bunning behaviour, which is good for itself, but not so good when applying it to the whole family of reptiles. This is more a fact of having enough remains and funding to study, however. So, Stegocerus, a species we can be fairly confident did in fact partake in the famous headbutting scenes we often see in media. But what do you think of this small dinosaur? And which lesser known dinosaur should I do a breakdown on next? Until then, thank you for watching.